thousand people. Holy smoke. Yeah. I believe we're there. Let's see here. Yep. Looks like we're looks like we're awesome. live. Awesome. Says yeah. We are. Yeah. Hi Sandy. Hi Tony. Hi hey, everybody. Guys. Thanks Where's for checking know? in with us today for our <laughs> weekly interview with one of our Momentum Makers authors. This is a special one, Sandy uh, Cohen, because Sandy, uh, we go back um, a little ways, don't we, Sandy? Sandy was one of the co-founders, <laughs> Sandy was one of the co-founders for the Association of Network Marketing Professionals, which I have a lot of respect for that organization. I've actually uh, trained on the stage there many years with Sandy, and uh, Sandy and her husband, Ed, they were childhood sweethearts, and they've been business partners, and they're still best of friends for years and years and years, and they've experienced their ups and downs in business. Um, they were living the dream. They were working, working uh, you know, really hard, and they built an unbelievable lifestyle with a 10,000-square-foot home and a Rolls Royce and a stretch limo and an English houseman and a cook from, the, from Grand Cayman, never thinking that that would ever go away, and they sold that traditional business. And what happened was the buyers defaulted. They they pierced the corporate veil and went. Sandy and her husband Ed went into a eight year multi million dollar lawsuit, um, and it was brutal. And they lost everything. And so you know what it felt like to be at the top, Sandy, and also at the bottom. And uh, so they were dead broke, um, and they were now four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. And they became serious students of um, network marketing and in, in over the past, how many years now, Sandy, have you been doing this full time? I, I can't believe it. But I think this month is 28 years full time. 28 years. But I got they've started over, two. <laughs> wow. They've helped over 45 people make over a million dollars. And, uh, they've been featured in five best selling books, including the Momentum Maker series. Which I'm really excited about. There it is. There yay! It is. Yay! And, yeah. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Sandy joined us on this project, and we're going to be spending a few minutes with Sandy and just getting into her head and letting her share some of her story and some of her tips for building a million dollar network marketing business. So, Tony, over to you. Yeah. Well, I think that's the that's that's the nut of it, isn't it? I mean, at the end of the day, you know, in this book is Sandy's story, and what a story it is, Sandy. I, you know, I can't imagine. Um, you know, building that American dream, so to speak, in that traditional business and then, and then literally losing it all, um, and, and, and having to, you know, climb up. And what's interesting is you chose sort of this non-traditional path to kind of reestablish your wealth and, and your goals and your dreams. And talk, talk to me a little bit about that piece because, you know, 26 years ago, network marketing was still in that murky water in our culture. Um, and yet it's what you chose following everything you had been through, you know, how did, how did you land? How, how did this become your thing? You know, it's interesting when you ask that question, Tony, but every successful person has a story and it quite honestly was not by choice. Um, Ed sold his last pharmacy uh, to Rite Aid and it was a miserable winter day and I'm sitting there crying. I mean, literally crying because from having everything, we're now, even though we won in court, we're $450,000 in debt at the age of 52. What do you do? And I, I said to Ed, I'm leaving. And he said, what do you mean you're leaving? And this is Philadelphia. I said, if I have to start over again, at least I want to see the sunshine. And somebody gave me a name on a yellow three by five card. And they said, when you get to Arizona, call this lady, you'll love her. Wow. And she was the one that said to me, what are you going to do now? You know, and I said, I honestly don't know because now I, in spite of everything that was so bad, I'm now taking care of my mother in this little tiny apartment, um, diaper tube fed suctioned on oxygen with breast cancer and Alzheimer's because I would not put her in a nursing home because I serviced them. So I had to be a caregiver at home. And going back to teaching school was not an option. I'd never get out of debt. And she said, you know, I'm getting involved in something called network marketing. And maybe if we help each other or we help enough other people, we could get what we want. And I said, you know what, Eileen? No way. No how. Because years before, I had it, it convinced him to buy $8,000 worth of water filters that we put in all uh. these 
that we had to give away to Goodwill, and he waved his finger at me. Now, we're married forever, and he never gets angry, <laughs> except the fuck. That's one thing. But he waved his finger, and he said, don't you ever, ever mention network marketing again. It does not work. Mm. And as she said that to me about getting my life back, if I'm willing to help other people, because I volunteered in the 60s to be the first white female in an all-black school in North Philadelphia, because I wanted to make a difference. And I said, okay, I have no choice this year, but we have to keep it a secret. We can't tell <laughs> Ed. So you have to lend me the money <laughs> yeah, wow. your program. And she did. And the rest wow. of the three. That's fantastic. So so, Sandy, on your journey, when you say the rest is history, that's the part that people really want to know. Like what, uh, in a nutshell, give us, um, you know, from the time you signed up to the time you started to see some positive results, what did that look like and how did you put that all together? I'm so glad you asked that, George, because my story is so similar to yours. Mm. Working full time back in the day when long distance was 25 cents a minute. And yeah. cell phones, um, working three years full time. My phone bills were bigger than my checks. Mm. And Ed kept saying, yeah. this is nonsense. You, you can't do this. You got to go get a job. And the truth is going to work for someone else scared me more than failing in the profession. And so for the first three years, I was in 11 companies in three years. And wow, I did not know that. Yeah, oh 11. God. And I used to keep the comp plans on on a wall. <laughs> so <laughs> somebody would say, oh, hi, yeah, great. To and what are we talking about today? Hold on, please. I pushed the whole button. <laughs> but I, I could not figure out how people who can't walk and chew gum at the same time make gangster money. Right. And I made a decision that I had to become more. And how was I going to learn? You guys are so, so in the right place because you've got people to learn from. They share their stories and everybody has a story. So I started seeking mentorship. I became a student reading. Back in those days, it was VHS tapes and it was audio cassette tapes and just became a student looking for mentors who already had the success. And you know what? I was shocked how many so were so willing to have conversations. You know, it right. wasn't like they said, oh, you're, you're brand new. We don't even want to talk to you. They were so eager to share and answer questions and give guidelines. So the people today, oh, my goodness, if they can fog a mirror, if they have the belief within them, and the commitment, and like Les Brown says, they got to be hungry. And if you're hungry and you want a better lifestyle, you're in the right place. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Cool. Yeah, that's really great. And and so, you know, when you look at that storied career, I mean, lifting yourself like, you know, a phoenix rising out of the desert, you know, over these 28 years, um, lots of lessons learned. You know, uh, what what would you say are some of those top, things that you've learned over time i mean a lot of things have come and gone what are the things that you can look back and say you know what these, these were the earmarks of what built my story way back when um i don't know if you'll even remember this gentleman by the name of hilton johnson i, I do it's a lie okay I've, i haven't heard his name in years right and somehow somebody one of the mentors i was talking suggested i get his book or his audio, whatever. And that's where I learned to become. If you look at my signature in my email or on my business cards, it's Ed is Ed Cohen RPH. So most people know that means registered pharmacist. Then they look uh -huh. it up and it says PS and they assume it has something to do with the sciences, but it doesn't problem solver. Oh, that's great. Right? So in, yeah. in the profession of network marketing, for me, the game changer was solve other people's problems. Where is right. your point? Well, what is it that you want to change? You, you, you want to get your wife home so she can be a stay-at-home mom? Uh, do you want to 
ha have enough money to put the kids into private school? Do you hate your job or, or do you want to work towards retirement? So I became a problem solver and Hilton Johnson used to have 11 top questions and I would just go through those questions. So it wasn't about me telling anything. It was all about asking questions. And, and, and if you remember Columbo, you know, with the dirty raincoat, and the scarf, <laughs> I used to think I was Columbo because no matter what they said, I asked another question. And before we were done the conversation, and I said very little, they'd say, wow, it was so good talking to you. I didn't say anything. They just were talking. <laughs> but they identified where they were versus where they would rather be. And then I'd say, well, you know, I just might have a solution for you. Are you open, that. Mm. open to taking a look at what I'm doing? And if you're not open, it's okay. We're still going to become friends. So that you, had, you, had, you interviewed that, you interviewed them and you were an information gatherer and a pro and you were looking for ways that you could help them through well, the questions that you asked. Yeah, yeah. D what I'm doing, is it even of interest to them? You know, are they even open to knowing about what I'm doing? Because it's not about, and, and the, I think the two biggest reasons people fail in network marketing and it drives me crazy unrealistic expectations, you know, the, the hype and the lies. Oh, just get two people and next week your mailbox is going to be filled with just checks like you can't believe. That's that's such a lie. It's it's a business, but you don't have to mortgage your home and you don't have to mortgage your first child, but you do have right. to take action <laughs> and activity and do what's necessary. Just like when I started my med surge business, I used the yellow pages. If anybody remembers the yellow pages, those big books, you know, I'd start with A and I'd call every doctor, every hospital. And they said, well, you do, you do breast prosthesis. Well, no, not yet. But if I get certified, will you refer me patients? Yeah. Do you do augmentative speech devices? Uh, not yet. But if I become certified, will you send me patients? And I built a multi-million dollar business in three years by solving problems of what other people need. Our profession is no different. And yeah. And mm -hmm. people are so eager to make the sale and most people feel fail because they don't want to sell and they don't want to recruit. So if they just become Columbo, get the raincoat and the, the cigar and the floppy hat and see how many questions you can ask and see what the responses are. And you're going to make a friend in the process. Yeah. I probably won't be wearing the floppy hat or the raincoat, but I might have a cigar. You never know. <laughs> uh, so Sandy, um, so, you know, we live in a, a world that's just heavily laden with technology today. There's a, so much technology out there. And then we built our business old school. And, you know, you, you mentioned the expensive telephone bill. I, you know, I had, I had forgotten all about that, but I was spending three to $5,000 a month on my telephone bill long before I was even making $200 a month, long before I was making even $200 a month. That's how it was back then. Cause you just had to do it. That's the only way you could do it. So, with the technology that we have today and the social media platforms and all that, um, how how much of the way you build the business today is dependent on technology, and and what, how how does how have things changed and how are they the same? Like what principles are the same and what things are different? You know, it's interesting because you've hit a hot button for me because I'm a tech junkie, and it all started about 23 years ago. I listened to an audio, and some of you may remember audios. Uh, and this is what the guy said. If you do not embrace technology, those who do will leave you in the dust. And mm. I, okay, nobody's going to leave me in the dust. And I said to Ed, teach me how to use a computer. And he looked at me, one word answer. Why? I said, what do you mean why? He said, I'll type your letters for you. No, no, I'm not typing letters to the hospitals and the doc. I'm going to work from home. And he wouldn't teach me. And it was my birthday. My mother said to me, what do you want for my birthday? And I said, I want to take computer classes like crazy because all Ed's pharmacies in the 50s and the 60s were automated with computers, which they called DOS in those days. And that's what I thought I had to learn. So when it comes to today, I mean, it, my last big business that we were in for 16 years, we built a team around the world. It was the dream uh, where we helped create actually 48 people to make over a million dollars. But we did it, started with a fax machine, fax on demand. 
Right. I mean, where the thermal link disappeared after about a week. Yeah. Now, <laughs> look at what we have with Zoom anywhere in the world. So I, I rely heavily on technology. And I even people my age can do it because if six-year-olds can do it, there's hope for everybody. But technology will just allow you to do things a whole lot faster. And but it's what technology are you using and to what to, to what end result. And um, there's other things I could share, but this is not the place for it. Uh, but all I know is that if you first of all, with the science fiction world, the science fiction movie, this world has been living in this year. We have no choice but to use technology. I mean, I just said to Ed yesterday for Thanksgiving, you got to find a little turkey because it's just the two of us. And then I want to do a Zoom Thanksgiving with our family who are on the East Coast. I mean, we did that for the, the high holidays. I mean, birthday, yeah. we're doing Zooms. I mean, most people never had Zoom, yet alone know how, knew how to use it. Now it's like, it, it's mandatory. You've got to know how to use Zoom. It allows us yeah, to do exactly what we did before in person. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, definitely the technology that's available today allows you to do now, um, did, you know, remotely what you used to be able to do in person uh, and on a grander scale. The, the, the thing that I'm kind of interested in, uh, Sandy, is, is over the course of time, you know, you've, you've built tens of thousands of relationships and, and you know, some of them have, have turned into really great relationships, uh, you know, in your business and, and some of them, you know, maybe not so much, but uh, over that course, you, you've become an expert on starting those conversations. Um, you know, what, what, what have you learned are sort of the best tips for bridging that gap with somebody you're, in, you're, you're meeting for the first time? You know, how, how do you initiate um, those conversations with people? And, you, you know, you talked about the questions. What are some of the best questions to start with? It's funny that you say that because two days ago, um, because I, on, on social media, I wish everybody a happy birthday and a cute little emoji and all that stuff. And I, you know, how have you been doing during this science fiction movie? Bring me up to date and let's explore <laughs> possible, but let's explore possible collaboration. That can do just a really soft. So to give you an example, how to do it a hundred percent wrong. This gal says, Oh, I've got you scheduled on a Zoom call with my three upline, and we're going to tell you how many millions of dollars you're going to make. I said, wait a minute. I don't even know what you do. You don't know what I do. You got me on a call with three upline. So this morning I text her. I said, are you really new to network marketing? Oh, yeah, I'm just getting started. <laughs> so it's like, all right, square one. You better get some coaching as, as to how you start a conversation. So usually how I start a conversation is just saying, how are you and the family doing? You know, what have you found that's going well or going wrong for you during this, this historical year? And then I shut up and wait for them to respond. So it's a dance. You know, it's not, well, let me tell you about what I got today and why you got to buy it and why you're going to make millions and I'm going to have my three up line on the phone with you in two days. That's not the way you build a relationship so almost like using technology as if you were meeting someone at starbucks and they were sitting at the next table and you smile and you say hi and oh, oh i love your shoes women love to compliment other women about shoes i don't know what guys do but anyway <laughs> <laughs> and just you know just warm and friendly and you really it's about wanting to make a new friend before you're trying to sell anything. Because if you attack and trying to sell, they're gonna push you away and you're not even gonna make a friendship. So it's really about becoming a friend first. You know, how many Absolutely. kids do you have? How are you dealing with homeschooling? You know, uh, I was just on the phone with a dear friend and he's a Mr. Mom and he's got three kids at home and he's a CPA. It's like, oh my God, Richard, how are you dealing with all of this? And he said, not well, not well. But the point is, I think if you reach out to anybody that's in the Momentum Makers series and they're so willing to have a conversation, Ask them that same question. Nobody just pounces on somebody like, oh, my God, you know, um, 
I've got the next greatest thing that's going to grow hair on Jordan's head in 24 hours. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Sandy, as we kind of wrap up here, Tony's got some um, some announcements, but uh, as we wrap up, what what is the one or two things that you like best about network marketing? Why network marketing? And you come from a place where you really know the difference. Oh, yeah. Um, for people who have a dream, why network marketing? Because I don't care. I mean, the truth is I really didn't work for somebody for a very long time, but the little experience I had taught me that, gosh, I'll never do that again. So if you're really looking for more peace of mind, to live the life that you want to live, are you willing to commit three, five, six, seven years part time to make that dream a reality? Not three, five, six weeks or three, five, six months, but the commitment to developing your skills. And I tell people this all the time your income is directly proportionate to your skills. So if, if you don't, if you haven't mastered, the initial conversation or the initial connection, the initial invitation about how to make a friend first. You never get beyond that to build the team of your dreams. And it's about leverage. It's about, you know, I, I, my, the young woman that introduced me back into network marketing, uh, her husband took sick with a very rare blood disease. That prognosis was maybe 18 months to two years. She was able to be a full-time caregiver for nine years because of all the stuff we were doing for him alternatively that she could have never done if she had a job or she was still a realtor because the income she accumulated passively that came in every month to pay her mortgage or car payment, you know, all the alternative medical bills would have only been possible in the profession of network marketing. That's great. Yeah, Tony. Thank you so yeah. much, Sandy. I'm, I'm excited that you're part of the Momentum Maker series. Tony, you got some announcements for us. When is book two coming out? Yeah, super excited. Uh, so, yes, Momentum Makers, the series, you know, you, you, so many incredible tips and, and so much wisdom from people just like Sandy. You know, in this first book, there's literally over, you know, combined over 280 years of experience and wisdom poured into this first book. It's available right now at go.momentummakers.io. That's go.momentummakers.io. Uh, you can get your copy now. Book two on social media will be out in January. January 12th is what we're aiming for with that book. And uh, and then there'll be books on leadership and, and team building and branding and all kinds of other ones after that. Um, so be sure to jump into the series right now at, at go.momentummakers.io. Um, Sandy, Incredible story, just really great wisdom. Thank you for that, Jordan. As always, awesome, and I, I just appreciate you and appreciate you too, Sandy. You've, you've been working with us now for a year uh, on this on this <laughs> book, and I just I really do appreciate you. So thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Awesome. We'll we'll see you all next week.